So following an escalation in these ongoing disruptions and truck blockades that we've seen along the N3 and other routes, uh, Interministerial Committee has briefed the media today about some of the solutions uh, to the grievances of truck drivers. While the issue has escalated in recent weeks, the problem is in fact a long-standing one. Local truckers are claiming trucking companies are employing foreigners at much lower wages and they're very unhappy about this. Gavin Kelly, CEO of the Road Freight Association, joins us now. So Gavin, thank you very much for your time. We know that this was an issue from last year already and this team of ministers had been set up to try and look at the problem and come up with some solutions. There's a plan on the table. Could you tell us briefly what that plan entails? Uh, and what your um, organization is concerned about. Good evening, Sally, and good evening to all your viewers. This has been on the table for a number of years. It's been around at least for four years. And there have been various attempts to address this. And now there's a plan, an imp implementation plan, that involves three ministries. And that's really where the crux of the matter lies. So what has happened is that we've identified exactly what the causes are, which is important. We've identified what we need to do. We've identified who needs to do it by when and what the desired outcome should be. So in those three areas or ministries, it's really around giving foreigners the right to work in South Africa. You can't as a foreigner work in South Africa unless you have some sort of permission stroke visa permit, whatever you would like to call it. And that is a process that goes through the Department of Home Affairs and through the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor publishes in a government gazette a so-called scarce skills list every year mm -hmm. where it for example, doctors or lawyers or engineers or whatever the case may be, and we need so many in that sort of field. Those are the scarce skills, and foreigners who have those skills can come and work in South Africa once the employer has proven that they could not find somebody to fill that skill so in let, this country. And let me just jump that. in there quickly. Are truckers on the scarce skills list? They are not. Okay, my they understanding is that doesn't mean that you, if you're a foreigner uh, working in trucking, you're illegal. My understanding is that provided the employer has attempted to fill the position with a local person and has not been successful, they can then move forward with the process of trying to get a visa for this foreign worker. Am I correct that that is where the law is at? That is correct, but that process involves also a leg with the Department of Labor who has a list of drivers in South Africa who are unemployed and are looking for jobs. So it's not just simple, I can quickly go and look and if I can't find somebody, I can then apply and get a foreigner into the country. There's actually quite a lengthy process. I to see. Get a Talk to me about how many foreigners are employed in trucking in South Africa. I want to know the ratios, the percentages. Oh, that's a good question, Sally, because that brings us to the other point sort of through the back door, and that's about registrations, registrations of employers and registrations of their employees. So with the Road Freight Association, it's a party to the National Bargaining Council, and we register both our employers, our trucking operators, our members, as well as their employees. Now, we know at that council, there are roughly 125,000 individuals registered as employees across the sector, of which roughly 65,000 are drivers. So the rest are, are, are admin people, et cetera, et cetera. And of that 65,000 drivers registered at council, roughly 6,500 are foreigners. So, so we 10%, know that. So 10% of the above board um, entities such as the Road Freight Association, 10% of drivers are actually foreigners and those are legally employed, they've got the paperwork. Clearly then there's a problem with the unscrupulous uh, trucking companies that are not registered with an organisation such as yours who forge papers. We do know that the Labour Minister has spoken about the fact that some 200 illegal foreign drivers have been arrested. So am I correct that the truckers gripe is not with the legally employed foreign truckers, but with those who are cutting corners? Or do they see all foreign truckers as a problem? Well, I think, Sally, when you are a little bit desperate and frustrated and things aren't going the way you'd hope them to go, they would see all foreign drivers as being part of the problem. But you're quite correct. Mm. 
it's it's that grouping out there that we don't exactly know and the atdf on occasion has said that 80 percent of drivers are, are foreigners and that could be from that grouping that is not registered and doesn't want to That's play the by all the rules. truckers foundation that are, are at the center of these grievances am i right Okay, I want to talk to you about the plan on the table. I know you've got a problem with this operating license suggestion. I'm not clear how more paperwork will solve the problem because it seems the law is in place. It just needs to be properly upheld and that these unscrupulous uh, drivers and trucking companies need to be dealt with. Is there a deal to stop the blockades? Because the massive impact on our economy just cannot be uh, overestimated, can it? No, no, it, it can't be underestimated in any sense of the word. And yes, what was signed today is the deal. But of course, that deal is only going to be worth the paper that was signed or it's written on if it's implemented. So if the Department of Transport does what it said it was going to do, if the Department of Labor does what it said it was going to do, and so, so forth and so forth. So those actions have to take place and we have to hold those various entities accountable. Otherwise, you know, tomorrow speaking in a month or two, mm. those who are unhappy will start to protest again and cause delays again. And we can't allow that to happen. Yeah, and we've seen a, a series of talks and then it breaks down and problems. So I have to ask you, is the minister on the right track at last to deal with this tracking problem? All the ministers have committed to this process um, and, and some of them have different things to achieve and some of them are not easy things to achieve. I think trying to sort out the visa process and remember a lot of these so-called uh, visas that are in play right now, like the Zimbabwe exemption permit, are due to expire on the 31st of December this year. So there is a process there. But there are one or two other things that can quite easily be implemented literally within the next couple of days, uh, probably next couple of weeks. So, yes, we can actually prevent the next protest if we just do what we are committed to do. All right, so stick to the commitment. Uh, that is potentially hopeful news, and thank you very much for that update. That's Gavin Kelly, CEO of the Road Freight Association.